when you start thinking about Alexa and all these other things, one of the things that my career has been completely predicated on is the fact that I am willing to take chances on things that aren't mainstream yet because I understand that if I go after social code and if I go after Vine and if I go after Micmac and if I go after Yak and if I go after all these things that I only need one of those seven to actually hit Snapchat, Instagram to win that bet. We have enormous fear in this room to I have to wait, or let's wait till it's big, or what if I waste my time, right? Will I waste my time on these platforms if it doesn't become big? And so one of the other themes that I really wanted to leave here with tonight, knowing the demo of this room, is we have to have a lot more risk tolerance on new platforms. If you're not playing, back to details, and I know you're taking notes, if you're not playing with Marco Polo, and after school and house party, then you're not there potentially at the platforms that can become the next things at the top of our tongue. How many people here, let's be really honest. Let's be really, really, really honest with ourselves inbound. Please raise your hand if this is true. How many people in this room, and I want everybody to look around, said two and a half years ago, three years ago, maybe even a year ago, that they would never be on Snapchat that was stupid and now have a Snapchat account? Raise your hands. Raise it high, higher. This, this is where all the action is. This is where all the action is. This is the opportunity in this room. But we continue to downplay. We continue to downplay the upside because we fear the risk of being on there and wasting time. If you have not achieved what you want to professionally or in life, time is the number one thing you've got. You need to deploy as much of that as humanly possible. That is the asset. When you have not achieved the things that you want to happen in life, and it is because of time that you haven't wanted to put into these platforms or worlds, that is a massive mistake. It's the one asset you have. Not everybody in this room has money. It's true. You agree, right? So are you gonna work your fucking face off? Thank you. It's the one thing we have. It's the one thing we have because everybody wants to come up with excuses. I spend my life reading excuses on social media and my inbox. I'm this, I wasn't born that way, I wasn't born here. This, I'm a a female, I'm an immigrant, I'm a minority, I'm transgender. Excuses, reality. By the way, I truly believe those are disadvantages. I'm not naive to the shortcomings of this country. The problem is nobody cares. The market doesn't care. So we sit and we dwell, and that's all, what do you think we've been doing for the last month? And what we're gonna do tomorrow morning, we're gonna dwell and complain, and that's utter defense. Instead of going on the offense, and so we spend unbelievable amounts of time dwelling and wasting our time on dumb shit. Like, pe- people literally email me and say, you're so lucky, and I wish this was happening to me, and then the third tweet, or the third Instagram post is, awesome Saturday stayed home and watched an entire season of fucking Game of Thrones. <laughs> we need to start understanding how big this opportunity is because for everybody in this room, you will sit back in 20, 30 years and regret if you didn't execute in this era. And by the way, I don't want to hear that this is for 20 and 30 year olds. 40, 50, 60, 70. It's an equal playing field if you're willing to be a practitioner and understand the ecosystem that I've been speaking about tonight. There's never been a better time. Look, it's very obvious. These kind of characters. There was no respect for 20-year-olds in the business world 20 years ago when I came out, but now because of technology, there's a lot of organizations that absolutely respect 20 and 30-year-olds. Also, what is happening is I'm spending so much time with 40 to 60 year old executives who are dwelling and are upset and tell me dumb shit like, but Gary, I didn't grow up with this shit. Neither did I, Alice. I was 20 before I even was on a computer. I didn't grow up with this shit, I figured it out. And so I sit there and see completely capable operators that have made it happen for the last 20, 30 years being crippled by, I don't understand how Snapchat works, it's so confusing. We're just filled with excuses. We are. People are just losing their hunger. And then, then, by the way, let me get really mad for two seconds with my fancy rich friends. The thing that I'm completely blown away by that I had no idea was going on in capitalism and meritocracy is once you get rich, you actually try to spend your dollars 
to create laws that allow you not to work and still hold on to your money. 100%, right? I mean, I'm blown away by this. You were benefit, you were benefited because in your 20s to 60, for 40 years, you grinded and out-executed somebody and you were able to make lots of money, but now that you're tired and you're finished and you're older and don't want to put in the work, you don't want the next young buck to come along and eat your lunch. That's not how capitalism works. It's true. It's just not. And so we have all these trends and we have the great fortune of living in an era where things have been really good for a very long time. And so I walk around the world and I told my wife Lizzie, I'm like, Lizzie, listen to me. I don't care clearly because I was such a shit student what the kids do at school, but please, they can't be in programs where we give away seventh place trophies. I have no idea who wins the election tonight, but we need to fucking ban seventh place trophies in America. And so we have all these macro situations going on and not to mention, for a lot of people here under 30, you haven't been in the game during an economic downturn because things have been very cushy for the last seven years where if you're 23 years old and you have an idea, your company's miraculously worth $4 million. And so we're living in a very intriguing time and I think that the passion and the angst and the energy that I bring tonight are predicated on a couple of tried and true things. Number one, if you're not making long-term decisions, you will be vulnerable. The market's changing very quickly and anybody who's looking for short-term stuff gets short-term stuff and then gets hurt in the long-term. Things like Airbnb. Guys, Airbnb shouldn't have been invented by Brian and Joe. Airbnb should have been invented by Marriott, but Marriott is looking short-term and isn't creating business models to put themselves out of business. Uber should have not been created by Garrett and, they should, they should have not been created by Garrett and Travis. They should have been created by the guy or girl that owned the most medallions in New York City or by Greyhound. If you sit here tonight and you're doing well, you're in danger because there's somebody young and hungry that has the internet, which is a platform that creates a zero cost to get into the game that's coming after your shit. So if you don't do what I do, which is wake up every single morning, every single morning, and try to put yourself out of business, somebody else is gonna do it for you. It is much more fun, my friends, to put yourself out of business than have somebody else do it for you. And so please, if you're cushy, who's cushy? Raise your hand if shit's going real well. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Three people raised their hand. I think you need to shut down this fucking, you're doing good? Awesome, man. What was that? I was like, you're doing good? You're like, yeah, we're doing okay. All right, Owen. Yeah, always. So, you've got to understand the only thing that's interesting to me and the only thing I have, I always say that basically my career is predicated much more similar to Mariano Rivera than anything else that I can think of. If you're a baseball fan, he was a very good closer for the New York Yankees where basically his entire career was predicated on one pitch. He had one pitch for 17 years and nobody could hit it. And that's basically my business career. I've got one pitch, which is the following. I know what you're gonna do before you know you're gonna do it. It's the thing that I was gifted with, just like if you can sing, just like you can shoot. I've always had the intuition. I was made fun of and aggressively made fun of for launching a website in 1996 because just like people sit here and think that Vine or Snapchat is a fad, there's people in this room that remember where the whole internet was a fad. But I bet on it and I built a big business. And then I was made fun of because this thing called YouTube came out and I took a chance on that because I thought it was gonna be big and started a wine show and sat in front of a camera and drank four bottles of wine for 20 minutes and hundreds of thousands of people watched it. And then that worked. And then Twitter worked. And then I invested in Twitter and Facebook and things of that nature. But I had so many losses along the way. One thing that's never talked about with my genius career was that I was on YouTube super early, but I left six months in and started producing Wine Library TV exclusively on Viddler. I was wrong. <laughs> One thing that's not talked about is that I thought that the biggest startup in the world in 2010 was going to be Yobongo. <laughs> I was wrong. 
and I continue to be interested in being wrong for the rest of my life because I am a purebred entrepreneur because I'm not scared of trying things and wasting my valuable time because I want things and most of all, and this is the most of all the whole thing, I just genuinely don't give a fuck about what you think about me. Balanced with, I really care about what everybody says about me. And in that friction, and I mean that, you have to deploy real ego and real humility around this course because we live in that world. But if I could inspire anything in the time that I was here today, it's very simply this. Please do me one favor. I'm gonna wrap it up with this, and this matters so much to me. Please, whatever it takes, call your grandmother, go to your great grandfather's burial spot, go back to the old country, go to a shelter, do something. Do something that recalibrates your perspective on what is actually going on here. We have never had it better. My friends, I'm gonna leave you with a very interesting data point. You guys like data? Who likes data? Great, let me give you some fucking data. More people in America will die from a coconut falling out of a tree and hitting you on the head and killing you than terrorism. Yeah. I see you tentative like, is he fucking serious? I'm dead fucking serious. Kids seven to 11 watch more Twitch esports than all the four major sports combined. That's data. We are living through a totally different time. 10 years ago, the weirdest thing in the world was your friend dated people online. Now every single person swipes to the left and right 24 seven. And so the trends in our society have changed and either you're gonna sit here and binary, this is a black and white conversation, either you're gonna leave here and understand how fucking awesome it is and you're gonna take full advantage of it and be a winner or you're gonna sit and dwell on all the negatives of it and be a losing player. It's just the truth. It's not complicated. It's not fun for me to say, I don't want you to lose. I desperately want you to win, but this is on you. Nobody else is in control. There are people who deal with things like the loss of their children or real diseases. We're sitting and dwelling about not getting enough likes on fucking Instagram. We're sitting and dwelling about forces that don't really have impact on us. It is time that this collective room and our space understands this is the...